as humans, we have this predisposition to fear the night. Naturally, this includes the creatures of the night as well. From a young age, we are told about things to fear. For our protection, of course, things like stranger danger, staying out of the woods at night, etc., etc. But it tends to lead to monsters under the bed and in the closet, vampires at night, and werewolves during the full moon. Suddenly, seemingly harmless creatures start to get a bad rap. Like moss, for example, are considered the symbols of death. And well, that's a little grim, isn't it? Insects have been around, well, for as long as we can remember. They have appeared in mythology around the world. Sometimes they appear as symbols to predict the future. Other times they appear as amulets to ward off evil. Sometimes they invoke an image of destruction. Like moss, for example. When we think of moss, we think of mothballs, holes in our sweaters, and them just devouring our pantry. Now, moss have different symbolic meanings to different cultures. And sometimes different colors of moss can mean certain things. Different kinds of moss can symbolize different things to different cultures. In Native South American mythology, when a white moth is found, it may not be mistreated, for it is also the spirit of a visiting ancestor. It has to be removed carefully, or the spirit may return to seek revenge. The Luna Moth symbolizes spiritual growth and transformation, while if you see a black moth, it's said to be the harbinger of death. Have you stumbled across a brown moth? You should be more cautious of the people you trust and let in your life. Which brings me to the Death's Head Hawk Moth. Even if you've never seen this moth in person, you know this moth. It's the famous moth that is mentioned in The Silence of the Lambs. Even if you've only seen the movie poster, you know this moth. You know what I'm talking about. That famous brown and yellow moth with the skull-shaped pattern on its thorax. Turns out, these guys are real and quite interesting. From their mythology to their day-to-day -day characteristics, these guys are super interesting bugs. In the movie, the serial killer Buffalo Bill would stuff these moss chrysalises or pupas or cocoons, whichever you prefer, into the throats of his victims you know, for the metamorphosis of the thing. The Death's Head Hawk Maw scientific name is Arachnia Atropos, and I'm going to just kind of like put a little clip of the correct pronunciation here because I know I butchered it. Acherontia Atropos. Yeah, see, I butchered it. <laughs> the first part of the name, the Acherontia part, is derived from Ekneuron 
which is a river in Greece that was believed in Greek mythology to be a branch of the river of the dead that flows in the underworld. Atropos comes from the myth about the face in Greek mythology, one of them being named Atropos. She was responsible for death. She was the actual fate what that was responsible for cutting the thread that would end the life of a mortal. So I guess that would be a good reason to choose this particular moth chrysalis to put in Buffalo Bill's victim's throats in The Silence of the Lambs because the name definitely means death. Fun fact about The Silence of the Lambs is that though they use the death head hawk moth in the movie, in the book it was actually the black witch moth that Buffalo Bill used. And they changed it for two reasons. The first reason was that they thought the skull on the death head obviously would look more sinister. And the second reason is that they couldn't get a black witch hawk or a black witch moth for filming. Now this moth was also featured in Bram Stoker's Dracula and Edgar Allan Poe's short story describes a close encounter with a death-headed sphinx moth. However sinister the myths and lore are about these moths, I feel that it's important to mention that they're actually harmless. <laughs> these little babies have a second nickname, in fact, and it is called the bee robber. And the skull on its thorax actually mimics a bee face while they're in their hive stealing honey. And they also mimic the scent of the bees, so they aren't seen as intruders, which basically lets the moth eat at the honey buffet as long as it wants. Another fun fact about this moth is its ability to squeak. Yes, squeak. And it's adorable. Seriously. Search YouTube for Death Head Hawk Moth Squeak and you can thank me later. The Death Head Hawk Moth can also grow and get a wingspan up to five inches. It is also the fastest moth in the world. It can fly at speeds up to 30 miles per hour. It can also hover like hummingbirds because they also drink nectar from flowers. So even though this guy is basically harmless, given its unusual markings, it's not surprising that people used to think the death's head hawk moth was a bad omen. In 1840, etymologist Moses Harris wrote that it is regarded not as the creation of a benevolent being, but the device of evil spirits. Spirits, enemies to man, conceived and fabricated in the dark, and that very shining of its eyes is thought to represent the fiery element whence it is supposed to have proceeded. Flying into their apartments in the evening, at times it extinguishes the light, foretelling war, pestilence, hunger, death to man and beast. I don't know if I would go that far per se, but I think I would probably be a little creeped out if I did see one of these guys in person. Make sure you let me know what you think of the death's head hawk moth in the comment section. I did want to take the last few minutes of this video to kind of explain to you guys what I want to do with the series. Um, basically, I want to practice my storytelling elements 
and visually and writing the written word. And a good way I thought to do that would be to kind of combine the Inktober elements that we had in 2018 with some more storytelling elements and the only constraint being the actual story. So meaning I can choose whatever medium I want, I can work whatever in whatever style I want, I can use different colors if I want. Um, so the only constraint would be the story. And I do feel like I have to apologize because I feel like this video didn't go according to my plan. And even though you guys don't know that per se, it's just, it's been a disaster. I actually had to restart this piece and that's why this video is out in July instead of June. And I am currently sitting in my car doing this voiceover. So it's been a very frustrating experience just trying to get this together the way that I wanted it with fireworks going off and the kids being loud in the house and just finding time to actually finish it. Um, but I will say that I am way happier now that I started the piece over and I am happy with the artwork. I'm really, really happy with the artwork. I don't typically like to use white in my art, like using the white of the paper. And I really did like the outcome of it. Um, so I have more that I want to add to this um, storytelling element. I'm working on a new backdrop and um, things like that that you'll see down the road. And this little series will be kind of like my experimentation. And I just really want to see what I can do with it. Um, so I hope you guys like this type of content. It's not going to be the only content, but I do really enjoy this content. So if you have any stories or lawyer, lawyer, lore, um, creatures, cryptids, anything that you want to see me illustrate and kind of tell a story with, please leave them in the comment section. I am really, really excited to see what you guys think. I would also like to say that I definitely plan in the future to have a secondary video go up the same week that I'm going to be releasing Grimm, um, just for the people that don't really care for this kind of content. Uh, partly because I'm kind of doing it to make myself feel good creatively and I really want to push myself with this kind of uh, content. So I will be uploading like a tutorial or review or a sketchbook spread or something to kind of go along with this during the week just so that the people that came here for something else will still get that um, kind of thing. I'd, I'd like to keep everybody happy, but I do feel like I need to do grim for me, and I hope that's okay with you guys. So I hope you liked the first story of the whole Grimm series and don't worry I'll be improving on this every time I make a new one. Here are some close-ups of the piece and I am really happy with how this turned out. So be sure to leave the stories that you would like me to do in the future in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.